some basically all that have all that I've done right now is um, I have the uh, Twitch chat open by the way and the uh, Slack open. So if you guys have any questions and you don't want to like necessarily ask me uh, or like yell it out, but you, which you can totally do if you want to just yell it out, uh, you can message us in Slack and I'll look at it uh, because we don't have a Google slide, so I can't have those questions. Uh, Nick, is the stream working? Yes, we're good. Okay, cool. Um, so basically what we're going to be doing today is uh, I'm going to be breaking into a box. Uh, the box is just a server, a locally ran, ran server on my computer. Uh, it's a virtual machine that Nick created. Um, and I'm going to show you the process of like how I find the box, how I scan the box, how I break into a box, and how I get root on the box. Uh, I don't necessarily... Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I won't be like showing you how to set up or uh, load the VM. This is if you're just trying to break into a server uh, by any means, um, and you don't have access to that, or you were doing it over the internet, which don't do unless you have permission from the owner of that box. Um, so first, uh, just make sure I'm on the host-only network. Um, So yeah, uh, this is my IP address, my local IP address for the box. So because I know that what, what network I'm on, um, I, can, uh, I can try and uh, scan that. So first, really quickly, I'm just going to tmux uh, into a window. Um, and I'm going to do a net discover. Uh, TAC R and then my IP address and my subnet. Basically, what this is going to do uh, is scan all the hosts on this network, uh, which I think I need to do that. That's strange. Uh, .1 yeah, that's up. Okay, so net discover sometimes is finicky. Um, another way you can do it is if you want to do host discovery on Nmap. So if I do tech SV and one nine two dot one six eight dot fifty six dot zero and then press enter, um, it'll show me. Uh, let's just do this then. This should scan my network uh, for all hosts. I'm a little rusty, so don't make fun of me too much. Um, another thing you can do is if you have Nessus. We're doing service enumeration for everything. Just doing service. Oh, dang, I am. Yeah, oh, my bad. No, I'm not. Nick, trying to make me redo everything. Uh, I'm going to do no ping to see if it's a little faster. Um, another thing you can do is uh, run, uh, what's it called, Nessus, so sudo system ctl enable, or I think I already enabled it, but start Nessus. Uh, if I go to my IP address, 192, and uh, Go to scans. I think I need to enable it. Uh, sudo service this Nessus D start. Basically, I'm just starting the service Nessus, but Nessus is, is it's a vulnerability scanner. Uh, you can get a free trial from it uh, for it, and it allows you to scan up to 16 IPs at once. I've been able to scan more, but I don't know if, if it means, I think it just means 16 concurrent scans. I don't think it means 16 IPs. Um, but if we connect to my IP address and the port, um, it's just starting up the plugins. I already set this up, so it shouldn't take too long. Uh, we can check back my, um, my IP. So 
the nmap scan came in, and basically what it did is it showed me that there is another box with the IP address of 192.168.56.101 uh, right here. Um, and it told me that because I did a really slow, a really fast scan, because I just wanted to see what boxes were on the network, it isn't showing me much information. All it shows me is the MAC address, the IP address, and the services that are running on it. Um, and you know, this is good information. I'm just gonna log into Nessus real quick. Um, this is good information and all, but like SSH is a standard service. Telenet, although it's a really outdated service, still kind of just a standard service. HTTP and SD, all of these, or SD looks weird, actually. I don't know what SD is. I'm gonna have to look more into that. But these, I don't know much information about these services. So I wanna know more. So I can nmap, tag SV, um, and then I can do 192.168.56. Dot 101, and I, it's basically just going to give me the, uh, it's just going to scan that one IP address instead of scanning the entire network. Uh, and I have a corrupt Zish file, or Zish history, so it's wonderful. Um, so while this is running, uh, I can go over to Nessus real quick and create a new scan. And I just want to do a basic network scan um, of an IP address. So I can just type in the IP address right here, uh, and I can name this uh, Nix Box, and um, I can. I think that's that's all I want. So I can I can definitely go in and like change what kind of ports. So I can do all ports or common ports. For the purposes of the t this tutorial, I think I can just use common ports. Um, Nick's not looking at me, so I'm just going to use all ports. Yeah, so. I, I don't know. It says right there. Yeah, but I don't know like what that all that includes. One, it's like one to ten thousand, I think. One to one thousand. <coughs> it's one to ten thousand. You'll get it. There's no ports above ten thousand. Okay. Well, I'm gonna do all ports because Nick's, you know, nice. Um, and I'm gonna save. And I'm going to start the the scan. So while that's scanning, I'm gonna come back to Nmap, and I see some pretty cool stuff. Um. <laughs> I can see that the box has uh, Apache 2.4.7. Um, it's running Ubuntu because it's running a version of SSH that has Ubuntu. Again, the Ubuntu part of it is um, it's kind of iffy because it could be running a version of Ubuntu SSH that like on another box. It's really Nmap can sometimes mess that up. It's not necessarily 100% uh, accurate on the OS that it's detecting. Um, so I'm just going to, uh, and sorry, if, if, if I don't know if the stream can hear my fans, but my fans are kind of blasting right now because I'm running like two VMs, Nessus and Kali. It's, it's getting intense. So, uh, so I want to hack into one of these services. Um, you know, Apache seems like a good place to start. Uh, the other, uh, if you notice before, this just said SD and that it was open, but now we can see that it is an Apache service and the version number that it's running. Um, I don't know how long this Nessus scan is going to take. Uh, so far, it has found not really much. Um, Nessus is, for the most part, says vulnerability, but it's just it's just like blues, which is just information. If it finds anything that's red, that's like a golden egg where you can break into it usually with a red um, unless it's a DOS in which case don't do that so um, I see that it's Apache uh, 2.47 now there is a way that you can search use search exploit with this so if I were to have done um, tac o x uh, and map dot xml and scanned it would have gone into search exploit but for the purposes of this, I don't really like using search exploit because we have Nmap or Nessus running. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to exploit DB and search, or I'm going to just search for, oh, oh, this found stuff. Oh, this found a lot of stuff. Okay, cool. So yellow is more or less nicer than blue because it's something that could be. Yellow is not necessarily uh, something that is uh, vulnerable. So it says that we have uh, arbitrary directory listing. So if I go to the IP address, 
Um, and I think it's port 80, so I believe it was port 80. So if I just do that, oh, look, I can look at a ton of stuff in the, uh, into the file. Oh, there's a readme. Should I open the readme, Nick? I don't know. I'm going to open the readme because, you know, there might be passwords in there. I've never had a password. Oh, I have to save the readme. So normally you would want to put this on a virtual environment because if you just save files, but I'm just going to open it. Actually, I'm not going to. So I'm going to open it. Uh, and it says, uh, this is a server, a server gets over my dude. And it has the get information or the link to it. Um, so it's simple, my dudes. Uh, so that wasn't really too helpful other than the fact that it's a get server. Um, it, it, again, it could be a get server. He could be doing a readme just to throw me off. Uh, this is Nick after all. So uh, if I come back and look at the scan, I wonder if it's done. Uh, my scans. Uh, yeah, it completed. So we didn't get anything critical, um, but we did get that there are uh, an, is, there's an unencrypted uh, <laughs> unencrypted telnet password and so all I have to do is root password to, to, to log into telnets. Oh, I, I didn't give you the objective. Okay, your objective is to find a file that's in var dark army. Okay, so there is a file in var dark army that I need to get because yep. I'm F society and yep. I have to hack stuff. So let me just quickly put my hood up. Just like <laughs> um sorry for whoever's on the Twitch stream and had to hear that on their mic. Uh, but so um, I'm gonna log into this SSH um, server or this server and quickly, you know, do some stuff. So if I tell Annette and I tell Annette to one nine two dot one six eight, I haven't used tell Annette in a really long time. So we're gonna have a learning experience, and I'm basically just typing in the password that it gave me. And what do you know? I'm in. I'm in. I'm in, guys. I'm in, boys. Um, this seems really easy, right? Like it, it, this wouldn't actually happen. But you'd be surprised of how many people have open Telenet servers, uh, just like lying around with default credentials of admin password or root password. Um, I'm not satisfied with this method, though. Uh, I, I'm on the box, but I, there should be other ways to be on the box. Um, Oh, that's a good question. Am I on the box? So let's see, who am I? I'm root. Um, so I can, let, let me see if I can go around here. CD var, uh, CD dark army, cat loot. Oh, you're in a honey pot, my dude. <sighs> I'm not on the box. <laughs> what a wonderful time. <laughs> So uh, this is actually happens quite a bit if you're, OK, if you're not in a scenario where you're pen testing for a company and you're pen testing and you're doing covert maybe, or if you're just practicing, um, people put honeypots around all the time. So you have to make sure you're not in one. And that you don't usually tell you with a text file in ASCII art that you're in a honeypot. But this case, they did to save us some time of me digging around. Um, you can typically tell you're in a honeypot if it's jail. Um, and to tell if it's jail, I, I don't know. What's the command to tell if it's jail? Uh, you can do a handful of things, and not all of them work. Um, you can check your root directory to see if there's a Docker in the file, because that'll tell you that you're in Docker. Uh, this one's not. I know that because I set it up. Um, you can check what PID0 is. I don't remember what the command to do that is. Um, but if PID0 is not your init system, you know you're in a honeypot. So uh, yeah, you can do that. Um, but I this. I'm at, a, I'm at a dead end now. I went down a rabbit hole, and it didn't work. And that's just how pen testing is. So um, I see that there's another port here. Uh, I, I don't know if that's going to be relevant. So um, I'm going to exit out of this, because I don't really care about this anymore. Actually, uh, is this really? Yeah, this is just a jail on the network. Wonderful. OK. Um, so I'm going to uh, tell Annette. Yeah, so that's that's something that's really good. Um, 
that if you if you're on a box and you see, notice that your IP address is not what you logged into, that typically means something fishy is happening. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you're in a jail, but it could mean that, that they have two different interfaces on that device or an interface that is uh, ported to another IP address or another box. So you have to be careful in that in that sense that you're breaking into the box you intend to. Um, so if I continue going through all this stuff, um, we're rolling up my sleeves because it's going to get a it's about to get, you know, difficult. Uh, I can tell net. I can try telling netting into. Uh, it, what is the telnet for port P? I haven't telenetted in like a really long time. So I'm gonna guess that is that is that a thing? Uh, can you just append the port after this port? Yeah, I think that I think that's a good idea. One nine two six eight dot five six dot one oh one uh two 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 three uh and then I type in root password. Um, uh, are we in a jail again? It looks like it, my dudes. So that telling that stuff is a dead end. So we done deal. We out. We outy. We make notes of that. Uh, if you're um, if you're doing a pen test and you know you have like an objective, uh, it's really good to take notes to not do that. But since this is such a short, um, Nessus, na Nessus may have an exploit. Uh, so let's see what this does. Um, okay, did that do anything for me? I don't think it did. Uh, let's read what this actually had to say. Uh, Nessus was able to exploit the issue using the following request. So it looks like we gave it an invalid header to get in using an Apache server uh, exploit. Um, now, I wonder if this is a Metasploit. Is this a Metasploit? It's not a Metasploit. OK, so Nick saved me some time. And I don't have to go dig around for that. Uh, so it looks like this process is truncated output uh, from the first 10 lines. Um, So this is the part where like I'm actually trying to think. So if I don't ta say, I, I'll I'll say my thought process, but like I don't know everything. So I'm I'm going to be. If you guys have a hint or you guys know something, you know, feel free to you know tell me. But I'm going to actually just be experimenting here. So um, if we do this request, we get this back. And can we enumerate anything from here? So if we uh, try to go to different places, it uh, doesn't look like it. Can we go to an actual directory? Um, so if I do root or um, Etsy past wd. Can you explain what you're doing? So I'm basically trying to enumerate the amount of information I can on the web server. I don't know where this web server is, and I don't know what paths I'm allowed to view. And instead of you know just dir busting it to the oblivion, which I could do, uh, I'm just kind of checking some key points um, to see if there's anything useful. I mean, you already have like they said, oh, this is a valid address. Might as well check that now. Yeah, they said this is valid, so might as well check it. It seem. I mean, in the readme. This. This one? Yeah. It's a get server? Yeah. Why not check what's in oh, never mind. The I thought that I had like different my bad. But I mean I can check get if I can check get to see if there's anything. Ooh. That gave something funky back. Um good thinking, Jake. Uh so if I continue down the rabbit hole. I get more funky stuff back. There's no requests. So I wonder if I inspect elements and uh, I view what's on. There's literally nothing. OK, well, what's the request doing? Uh, where is networking? There it is. Uh, reload. So it looks like, what are we doing here? Um, it's just 404 and because it's not found.
Yeah, it's just not found. Um, I, I have more thoughts. If it, if you are, well, I'm not supposed to give. Am I allowed to give this information? Yeah, you can give it. All right. So. Wait, does Jake know the answer? No. no. Oh, okay. I, I knew that you were gonna get bamboozled by a honeypot, and 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 that's what he's been giggling about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that took me all five minutes, though, so I think I'm okay. Um, what's your hint, Jake? Okay, so um, the readme said blah, 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 this is a Git server. Gave you that address, slash git, slash temp config. Um, that readme was in root, slash simple config, right? Maybe it's well, I don't know if it's in root. Yeah, in the web server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then it, it, it added that ex you're getting four hundred four four right here. Yeah. The readme said, like, ah, oh, there's stuff at git slash. Simple so config. get maybe, get maybe clone. What I'm saying is, is maybe behind the web root is a directory called git. I don't know. You're more experienced at this than me. I'm just spitballing. Yeah, no, I, I, I. So what I'm getting from you is I should get the 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 address to see if there's anything because it's a get server. So I should use get on it, right? That, that seems logical. And anyone disagree with me? No? OK, I guess I'll just use that. So we're going to get. So uh, if I, I don't know if I saved. Uh, so I'm just going to, where am I actually? I'm going to go to downloads. Um, so um, I'm going to get HTTP colon slash slash. 192.168.0 or .56.101 slash git slash simple uh, config um, is not a git command. Oh, I don't have clone in front of it because I'm not smart. Ooh, what is this? It is just the readme. Just a simple git server, my dudes. Is there anything? I mean, there's get, but that's it. Um, what's funny though is that there was, I don't know. I don't know too much about get, but I copied it as a root, so maybe that has to do something with the files or root. So um, at this point, I'm going to uh, I'm going to look and read up some more, some more about this. Uh, this link says there's more for me. Oh, I forgot that I don't have um, internet on this box. So. Um, I'm going to I'm going to use my uh, internet. I'll keep everything on the screen so you guys can see what I'm doing. But this is on my local box. So if I just copy this, should be able to read the HTTP 1.3 vulnerability. Um, so. Uh, not fixed in a patch in HTTP 1.3. It is a mod proxy, mod reverse proxy that is open. Um, this is showing me how to fix it. I don't want to fix it. I want to break into it. So I'm going to look up uh, this uh, this exploit. So uh, Apache uh, 1.3. Uh, Uh, let's see this. Oh, there there is Metasploit for this, but maybe it doesn't work. I don't know. Oh, this is just a scanner. Proxy bypass scanner. Um. So let's continue searching around. Uh. Remote exploit for this. So it's not a, so if you're in a working environment, it's not advised to just like download exploit.db code and run it because it could be anything unless you know it's what it's doing. Um, I'm just gonna kind of read through these and see what they're doing to see if I can figure out for myself how to build one. Um, looks like it gets a request from the target IP. Um, and it looks like we have to give it 
the a file that it can use to remote to the host. So if we can see, is that the same number that it's giving us for the uh, CV? Uh, 3368. 3368. So this is the exploit for it. Um, internal target IP. So this is a proof of concept, which typically means you don't want to run it on a production box if you're doing a test. Um, but because you know this is just a box that I'm messing around with, we'll down we'll 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 download it. I'm not gonna I'm gonna copy it because um, I have to copy it onto this box. Uh, so let's let's put this away. So we're gonna put that over there. Um, so I'm going to the kind of vim exploit.py and I should be able to paste in or not um, sorry I was checking to see if there's any questions oh I did paste in but that's that's really janky yeah I don't want that So a better way to do that is if I go to, that's not what I wanted. This is what happens when you messed up your hotkeys. Um, so if I go to six real quick, I can copy this and then I can go back to two, my workspace two, and I can w get, uh, I can switch my thing to internet, so I have internet now. So now I have, that's not what I wanted. Copy link, location. Remove index. Uh, W get so now I have that um, I can see from looking at the uh, code if I if I vim uh, really quickly uh, looking at the bottom or looking simply just at this it, it says to use it, uh, we use the URL of the server um, that we're giving, uh, and then the host, then the path that we want to go to. So Python Apache scan, which is not the name I put it, gave it, uh, tack r for the uh, website, and then the uh, path to the file we want to do. Um, and so, uh, well, I wonder if this is going to open up a shell or if I have to create a netcat session. So this is what file discussion you want to do? I've never, never, that's new to me. So this is just a regular application. It's not going to be a netcat session. Wonderful. And this is also an object that we could use for the netcat session. Wonderful. Okay, so I don't need to use this. You won't have a trusty guy like Nick to tell you you're doing something wrong. So I would have ran that, found that it would just give me information, and that I didn't need to use it. Um, so I'm going to cancel that. Uh, but there, there should be an exploit here. Uh, let's go back to the vulnerabilities and see if there's anything else that might be. Um, Uh, remote service using arc fork stream with no cipher uh, is due to weak keys. So this might be useful. There might be a weak SSH key that we can exploit here. And so this is actually probably a lot easier than running Python exploits. So. Uh, and you also have like a whole extra web server that you can look at yet, right? It's on port 9000 or whatever. 
Where did that go? Where did that information go? I think I put it back. Uh, no. No, I did, because it's Tmux. So I just scroll up. So, um, yeah, I missed this. This is why you take notes. Um, I'm not taking notes right now, but I should. Uh, so if we go to this uh, website, so I'm just going to remove this. And I'm going to put 9876. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Uh, so this is this looks like a login page. I wonder if they have um, root and password as the password. D doesn't look like it. What about admin password? Nope. No bueno. Uh, let's go to forums. This is. Wait, what? Um, I think I found my problem here. I need to connect. I was connecting to an IP address of an actual server. No, that's internal. That's internal? Mm -hmm. Oh. Then I was on the right one. My bad. Um, OK. So we can try a SQL injection or SQL map. Uh, but let's look around first, because we don't want to be loud. We don't know what we're doing. So is a network foreseen analyst tool. Uh, that's that's useful. What about licensing? Um, so looks like the only useful thing is the login page um, that I can see. Uh, I don't know if this has a, we can try SQL map, but I don't know if this will give us information. But because you suggested it, I'll try it. You know, might as well. Yeah, you can laugh at me. Uh, it's OK. So SQL map. I haven't used SQL map in a really long time. So um, we have to find uh, a place where we can inject the SQL map, or we can, we can inject stuff into. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to quickly look up, uh, gosh dang it, this is what happens when you don't hotkey stuff. So I'm going to quickly look up a uh, SQL map uh, location, or uh, commands, see if we can find some tutorial on it. So we need to find a place where there's a database to inject to. Um, we don't know if this is necessarily has it. We don't know if that website has it or that web link has a database necessarily. Uh, I think that it's best if we to enumerate a little bit more of the website, and I don't want to run that because um, it's really it's really loud. And, and not that I care about being loud, but it also takes a really long time to run. And if it's, you know, I want to have more information on the website before I go about scanning it like that. Um, uh, so if we go back to here and we see that this, I'm going to uh, move this to my second workstation. And I'm going to search about this uh, exploit. Or I think this is what version uh, about. Wiki. Does that just take me to another website? Which takes me to another website. Yeah. So, um, PCAPs total. 
uh, all the data has been deleted. The max PCAP size, there's no limit. So I can, I th there should be, um, it looks like there's an upload of total PCAP size if there's a limit, max file size. Um, let's look up a default login. So why not? The web interface. Um, the default is admin, so we're gonna log. We're gonna try to log in here. Admin, and that works. So again, you'd be surprised how many people actually have the default username and password for services. Uh, before you go and scan WordPress, WordPress doesn't have a default password. You have to set it. So, um, cool. Now we have more information. Um, so let's see what we can do here. Um, current max accepted size is 500 megabytes to change this. Uh, we don't want that. I want to go back to my admin page. That was, that's where the juicy stuff is. So we can see, we can add a user, we can add it, we can do the config. Um, we can, oh, it is an SQL server for reference. So, uh, I'm guessing it would have it would have if we ran SQL map it would have ran uh, a small list of default passwords and it would have probably gotten uh, into it this way. But again, we didn't need to do all that because we just searched the default password and it was using that. Um, so we can now go and see what the configuration is for these. This this is the configuration side. Can you click on any of this stuff? No, this is information. Um, so the version is 0.2. So I wonder what happens if we run, if we say x uh, version 0.20 exploit. Oh, what do you know? So it looks like there's a rapid seven, by the way, are the people who made Metasploit. So, um, that's, you know, that looks like it could be helpful. Um, and I will say that this is actually like, uh, using this is actually pretty beneficial because we can actually, we can, we can just test it. And if Metasploit ran it, if, Metas if they have it on Metasploit, it usually means it's tested in some environments, which means we can run it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, who cares? Um, so I'm going to just copy the name of this exploit. Um, and then I'm going to move this to workstation six, uh, MSF console. And I'm assuming y'all are following along because no one's asking any questions. So is everyone good? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm starting Metasploit. Um, my keyboard is getting extremely hot right now. So my fingers are burning. Um, <laughs> But uh, I can use multi handler uh, options. Set L host to 192.168.0 or dot 56.100. Um, set L port. I'll, I don't need to do that. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just loading up Metasploit. I'm uh, set using a multi handler. What a multi-handler does is it basically is just uh, a payload handler that allows me to receive multiple sessions. I don't necessarily need it because I'm only breaking into one box, but it's really useful for if you have multiple sessions of that box open. So you have a 64-bit, a 32-bit, um, or if you're running multiple exploits on that one box. It's really helpful for that. Uh, other than that, there's no real reason you need to use it other than just convenience. Um, so if I... Uh, use this. Um, I can see the options, um, and I can set our host to one nine two dot one six eight dot. What was the box fifty six dot one zero one? And I'm just setting the our host. The our host is basically the attack IP address, the one I want to attack. Um, 
I can also set uh, payload to be, um, I believe that it's CMD Unix uh, reverse, actually I don't want that one, uh, payload to be, I forgot what payload um, I usually use, it's like, actually I don't need a payload, I can just run it. Uh, it sets a default payload. So before you think I'm not running it without a payload, it has a default payload that it prefers to use. Um, targets. Uh, show target. Wouldn't you just change your matrix that you're attached to in that instance? You're right. Okay. So um, showing targets just shows the different machines you can run on the exploit. So if you're running, for example, Eternal Blue, there are different targets you can set, uh, whether it's 64-bit, 32-bit, um, all that stuff. Uh, in this case, there's just automatic, I guess. So, uh, or it's just showing me that I'm set to automatically detect whatever target there is. So if I uh, exploit, uh, no payload set. OK. <laughs> it doesn't set a default payload anymore. It used to. Or I, I guess my. War Machine, ha I had set a default payload, so it automatically, but this is a VM, so I don't have uh, my default payload set. So set payload. Um, I honestly don't remember what payload, what, what the path to the payload was. I'm um, going to close out of all of this. Uh, so I'm going to. Uh, Metasploit payload list. The reason I'm not searching for it inside of Metasploit is because it's in a VM and it's really slow. And so that's just going to take up a ton of time. Um, so the payload, uh, I guess Unix Meterpreter is the one that I want to use. So let's go back to this and Unix. I guess these are the only payloads that I can use. I'm just going to do the reverse netcat. Set lhost 192.168.56.100. What happens when you mistype? Um, and the port doesn't really matter. Um, I don't know why I lsed. Uh, but I can exploit now. And it should be running. And let's see if we get anything. Uh, one session opened. So we have a session. Uh, uh, no, ls. So we are on the box, which is good. But we need to see who am I. And I'm root. What do you know? So if I go back. Um, I can see that I was just in the, the default directory for this. Uh, CD, CD, what was it, var? Dark Army. Dark Army. Cat loot .txt. Complete. Or congrats, congrats. So I got root on the box, and I got my objective that F Society was trying to take the loot. So. I got the loot. Um, there are more methods. Nix told me there's a lot more methods on this box than what I just did, because uh, he told me there's three methods to getting user. Um, but this was the easiest, and that's all that matters, is getting root on the box. So that took me way longer than I thought it would. Do you want me to walk through the other ones, or do you want to do it? Um, I'll, I'll go through the other I mean, I want to try to do the other ones. Okay. So I'm on the box, right? Uh, and, you, and I have root. That's dandy and all. But you know, I want to see what other exploits are on the box. Because if you're doing a penetration test for a company, um, and you're a good penetration tester, uh, you want to find all the vulnerabilities, not just the fastest one. Of course, you want to find the fastest one so you can get on the box. But when you're on the box, now you have some time to enumerate and see if there's anything else that you can exploit. Um, so before I continue this, is there another way to get on the box without being root? Did I just not find it? Is it is it wait is it the SSH one with the no? Is that a dead end? Yeah. So when you're dealing with Nessus scans and they tell you you have issues with certs, they'll likely knock on 
you need access, then why don't you just go into all your decrypted access? Yeah, okay. That's not useful to me. Yeah, so that, that wasn't useful at all. Um, but what are the other, I mean, is it, did it show on my Nessus scans? No. It didn't? Nope. Oh, I have to enumerate it? You've already found it. You're just not going the right way. <coughs> it's the Git server. It's the Git server? The Git server. What can I do with a Git server? I've never exploited Git before. I know. <laughs> he likes to give me, Nick likes to give me challenges. Um, oh, I'm trying to think, what can I possibly do? Uh, okay, so I don't really care about this anymore. This is boring. Um, I'm going to close this session. I'm going to exit out. Uh, uh, just some background information on Explicale. Um, so that vulnerability was found back, it was published back in January, so it's actually really new. Um, and Explicale is popular software found on the Security Onion appliance, open source appliance, uh, which is used for basically a general purpose blue team security VM. Uh, and it's actually three exploits put together, which is fairly neat. And so they found a vulnerability that allows you to arbitrarily add users, arbitrarily confirm user accounts, and then arbitrarily accept payloads from authenticated users. So they chain those three payloads together in a really nice Metasploit module that allows you to do a decently complex ex exploit like via Metasploit very quickly. And so if you were dealing with this in a corporate environment that had deployed Security Onion but wasn't practicing like updates because it's a neat <coughs> box, um, this would probably still be exploitable today because uh, the patch came out in December. So, for anyone who doesn't think that would have actually happened, it could have. Um, and and like uh, that being said, with patching is like most services, most companies have to have a service time or a time that they service all boxes. So if an exploit comes out uh, and goes under the radar for a while, or it's it's right before the service patch, if if it's a bad company, they'll just wait until the service patch comes out or the service patch time comes out and then patch everything. So that leaves a really big window for you to break into stuff um, with that exploit. But that's if you're doing a long running test or you get lucky and the exploit just comes out when you're doing the pen test. Um, or you're just doing malicious stuff, which you should not do. It's illegal. You can go to jail. Um, so uh, this is the get server uh, I have to break into. Um, I'm gonna switch to the other. Uh, I'm gonna switch to Google to for for searching. Uh, I'm not ashamed of using Google to search for things. Um, so I'm going to break out. Gosh dang it! I always I always load up burp. So I don't care about this anymore. Um, Let's do Apache 1. Point, or what was it 2.4.7 get exploit cuz why not uh I don't think that's it I ignored you regardless. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so when you navigate to git slash simple config, then you get four right? Yeah. Know, but you can still clone it from the command line of git. Yes. That seems sort of weird to me. I think like my first go to would be to Well if it's a get server you shouldn't be able to access I don't think you can you can go to get servers with the HTTP and see the files. I don't either. I'm I'm just spitballing here. I'm looking at Nick's face to see what he uh, <laughs> what he's what information he's going to give. Another quick tip about penetration testing: social engineering. It's really helpful. You can tell when you're on the right track whether Nick smiles or not. I'm generally smiling when I'm on the wrong track. Exactly. So when he's smiling, I'm on the wrong track. But now that I've told him this, he's probably going to smile when I'm on the right track. Now I can't because I told y'all that method. I'm not going to be able to tell by his face anymore. Um, not that I was able to anyway. So I'm just, I think I switched Nix. I'm going to just kind of search around for uh, uh, stuff. As we know, this wasn't, there's nothing really helpful here uh, anymore that I. So it's kind of pointless at this point to use this. Um, I really wonder what happens if I were to give Nessus the Telenet information. Uh, for 
for the honey pot and see what it does. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to go to new scan. What was the, you actually need to go back and see what the password was. Root password, okay. Is there any? There's only two routes to get on the box. And there's two routes once you get on the box to get root. Both routes, both routes to get on the box though were root. This one will get you onto the box. Uh, the, not the th the uh, the get exploit will get you onto the box, but you won't be root. So there may be different routes to that. But um, I want to actually see what this happens if we give Nessus the username and password and like let it scan the jail. I want to see if it finds anything in the jail. Uh, so I'm going to go root password, new scan, is there like a s system scan one? Yeah, it's just a one scan. Let me go through these two for them. 192.168.56.101, enter, internal. Uh, and then credentials. And space race. So root. I don't think they have telnet. Yeah, I don't think I can telnet. I, can, I don't think I can give it telnet. Oh well, well this that and mm, that whatever. Uh, if you had SSH credential, oh, wait, I have root. I'm not, then anyways, uh, that's cheating. I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to do that. That's cheating. Exiting out of Nessus. Uh, was, okay, so this is, this is I, I don't need this anymore. Um, this is where I should be working, is figuring out what I can do with this. Uh, all I know is that it's this version of Apache. There's a get server on it. Don't know what version of get there is on it. He gave me a look like that's not right. Hmm. I wonder what like let's just let's just let's just get clone some stuff on the IP. See what happens. So get clone. Uh do I if if we do that, that means that I'm going to have to push a payload and run the payload. So wait, wait a minute. I know what you I know what you're thinking. So if I get clone, uh Go back to that. I don't want to type it. I'm lazy. One thing you'll learn, one thing you'll be when you're a pen tester is you'll get more and more lazy with typing things because why type things when you can copy them? Not copy as in the like plagiarism sense, but like copy as in the uh, lscd simple config. So let's let's write to a file. Uh, touch or let's. CD or Vim readme. Um, Nick's a baddie. Spells baddie wrong, but that's okay. Get push. Or get add. Get commit. Tech M. Jake's smart sometimes. Get push. Username. Uh, how do I enumerate that? That's getting interesting, boys. You look like you have an idea. No? Oh, okay. Username. I wonder. Get default username and password. <laughs> Again, I've never done this before, so we're gonna we're gonna find out if that's a thing.
you know what? We're going to try root. Because root's always a user, right? I'm like going to be totally wrong and embarrass myself. But oh well. Uh, root. Root. Nope. That didn't work. But it did give us a little bit, I guess, a little bit more information. That's RPC there. Hmm. Am I gonna have to create a payload for this? <sighs> nick, 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 Nickelodeon. And we get banned from Twitch for copyright. Um. Anyways, so I uh, what? I do not want to ask her. I haven't. Have I asked for a single hint from him? Like I, I have not. So I don't. I don't want any more. <laughs> yeah, so basically what would have happened there would have been I would have been doing this for hours and instead of like an hour. <laughs> gosh dang. That is yeah, that's actually no nah, gosh dang it. Why'd you give me a hint now? Now now I know too much. Um okay, so I'm gonna uh let's let get good. That's gonna be the next command. The payload's gonna be called get good. Um so find the, uh, so I guess we're just going to see if there's anything we can do to enumerate. Again, Google is our, um, is our friend here. So let's do enumerating get server. I don't want a script. Why, why, why do people write scripts for everything? I just want to know. I don't I don't like this. Um If only Nessus had a get scanner. Um Apparently I'm going hard mode now. Uh Maybe there's something in the get config? I don't know if that's a thing. Let's check out. Let's check it out. So I'm going to close this. Uh, ls secondly, cd dot get. There is stuff in the git. Um, cd config, cd or ls cat config. So, I'm not necessarily anything information in there. Let's cat info. Or CD info. Cat exclude. That's not helpful. I'm getting good at get now, so you're gonna learn with me here. Uh, I think this isn't gonna get. I don't think this is gonna give us anything. Cat description. There's one, ooh, what's this? Cat index, or cat index. I don't know what that is. It's a get index. What can we do with that? I don't know. Mm. This is a far cry from idea, and I don't actually think that it's as useful as I. Ness has mentioned like the weak, weak encryption or whatever on SSH. I'm pretty sure get is. is SSH based? He, he said no, but he looked no. Hmm. Can you can you break the 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 key with I don't. But there wasn't anything useful in that like that, because the 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 it was for SSH credentials that were like weak, but I still would need to crack them. Weak and being open two different things. No, I don't want a hint. What? <laughs> and uh, NSA, if you're watching, don't arrest us. 
I'm I'm pretty sure I'm already on a list. And Nick is, just for knowing Linux. Anyways, um, I wonder what we can do with that Git index. Is that is that the username? I have access technically to the computer because I'm the VM is there, so it shows me the username. But I'm not gonna. I don't think. I, I don't think that's the. Yeah, I do. I have the username to the box. I. That's so much lead. I can't. Oh, that's the host name. Forensics. So much lead. Forensics, my dude. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're going to continue on. Uh, let me go back to oh, I don't know what to Google here. Apache 2.4.7 get exploit or get Nick's laughing bothers me. Why? What is this? Options bleed, HTTP, HD access. I wonder if I can get to that. Hmm. Or let's search for it in here. smiling is bothering me too. Someone cover Nick's face up. <laughs> okay, um let's go back to gosh dang it. Let's go back to searching for information. I don't want a hint. Keep your hints to yourself. Hints are, hints are not Gucci for me. Oh wait, what is it? Oh, I saw something useful. Don't publicly expose .get. Here's how you can download your Git. Why would I not want to publicly expose .get? What information's in there? Tell me the information. Um, and thus we're reading a tutorial. I'm reading a tutorial while giving a tutorial. Hacking for you. Um, I don't think this gives me information I need. Hmm. Um, why did I click on that? I don't want that. Get exploit. Get repository exploit. Using get clone to pwn 3D. I'm just going to look at stuff now. I think this is the same thing. Reset hard nose, reset ls. I think this is just getting, you can just get the, I don't think this actually does anything. Enumeration. Uh, 
get username, password, enumeration. What did this do? Start username enumeration. I honestly don't know what this does. I'm reading it and it's just not working. Nick really wants me to ask for a hint because he knows he wins if I ask for a hint. So I would rather not break into a box than ask for a hint. I don't know you a single wing. We never agreed on any of that. And technically speaking, I broke into the box without needing, without needing a hint. So I would have already won the bet. My dude. And guessable user accounts. Let's guess some user accounts. No There's no brute forcing? Mm -hmm. Ah, wonderful. I wonder what I could do here. That's a hint. <laughs> what if I... It's push. Gosh dang it. I wonder what happens. What? Yeah, because we're we're pushing it with HTTP. Authentication is still over HTTP. It's over, okay. Authentication is over, just, just make sure. Yeah. I've never broken into get stuff, so y'all are learning with me. He's like, yeah, you should ask for a hint. But, but before you do that, somebody ask under caps and they be, they be some embarrassment. Um, is it so? It's, is is it authenticating over HTTP? Yeah. Why don't you touch it? Yeah. Is that more or less the hint that you want to give? No, that's not even close. What? Well, that doesn't help with anything. If it's if it's unencrypted over. In the middle where someone else is the uh, yeah, it's, it's not like he's logging in the box every five seconds for me to be like, let me just steal his passwords. Yeah. I have to, it's, it, there is a username and password in a file somewhere that Nick has put placed for me. Therefore, I must find it. No. But give me like 10 more minutes and see if I can figure it out. Why does, Alan's always amused. Tell him has he figured out his PC yet? Our friend Alan is building a computer right now, and he's not. Yeah, he didn't come because he's building a computer. Yeah, he didn't come because he's building a computer that he doesn't n that's broken because he broke it because he doesn't know how to fix it. Hi, Alan, if you're watching, learn learn how to build a computer. I wonder if I can do that. So I'm going to try and just like set
set no or make it push with no username and password like and not blank because blank empty and no authentication are two separate things so I wonder if I can make it go with no authentication so I'm gonna search how to do that so uh, get push no authentication without authentication That's SSH keys. I don't care about that. A common mistake is cloning using HTTP instead of HTTP. Ooh. I wonder if that's it. I was cloning with HTTPS when I should have been cloning with SSH. So if I use the repo, but I need a username at that point. Hmm. The username. Where can I find that? You want a hint? Fine, I'll get a hint. What branch are you on right now? Uh, get. Empty. I'm on, now I'm on the master branch. Wow, OK. OK, I didn't even notice that it said empty instead of master there. that um okay uh, so how do I get on the box now with that I can just replace that with a, a net stat session back to me because I'm guessing it runs the update wait hmm What? When does it run that? Makes. <coughs> oh, there we go. There's some more information. Oh, if you push the script, it runs the script. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So I just have to make a reverse netcat session. Um, so I'm going to uh, open up, instead of using tmux, I'm just going to open up another window, um, uh, net cat uh, tag. Well, what was the tag vvv? No, that's, that's if you want more information. Um, I'll just look it up. Uh, net cat reverse shell. I wonder if the box even has netcat. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Um, so netcat is really easy. I don't know. I don't know about that. There we go. That's the one I'm looking for. So, Nick, Nick Cat. I don't remember what the actual net branch is. I can't find the actual ID chain. You can search it, search that, or Google it, Nick Cat reverse that pops up. Uh, 
that that's what it says in that cat listener on the attacker box is use this Netcat listener. I think it's just the LP. LP, yeah, that's what it says. Uh, attack L, attack P. Yeah. Uh, and then I just Your credentials are. <sighs> so close. Okay. I uh, can't read me. I wonder if it's in the history. No, it's not in the history. Is that a waste of time? That's a waste of time. Um. Is it blank because the credentials are blank? <laughs> Just gonna not ask for a hint. Anyone, uh, anyone want to interject here? No? Okay. Jake, you have any more comments? Get, get exploitation. I've never done this before, so it's a learning experience. You may want to hint if you're going to get on the box and do more. It just gets harder from here. See, when I went to branches, I thought there would be a list of branches. That's why mm -hmm. I didn't think there was any more branches. How to authenticate with SS or with Git. You, you said the answer, how you find the credentials. But then you're like, nah. So rethink what you've been doing since you got on. Uh, get the uh, file history. Get K. That's not a thing. get log file get log tack p
does P do? I don't see P here. Why is everyone saying get K? Is get K a thing? I think it's just like, I think this is just what I'm going to have to do. Uh, get log tack P. There's the password. Yip de doo, I found the password. Now I have to like save it because it's being mean. Copy. Jeffrey? You have a friend named Jeffrey or something? At least make it funny. Get push origin master. There we go. Now we wait. Because it takes five minutes, I'll tell you right now your payload's not going to work. Why is my payload not going to work? Tech E's not without flag or a cat on either. Is that? Mm -hmm. Netcat's not, Net not the answer. What can I? Rev what can I? I mean, you might be able to use Netcat. You can try it, but I, that's not what I use. What if I, why don't I just, since I have script access, I can just run a script, I can just open SSH, run the script, or I can just like sudo, or like not sudo, but like services, it, it, SSH is running, I saw that it's running, so I don't need to start the service, but I can change the password of that user uh, with the, yeah I could. Yeah, that is, but if I can just SSH into it. You can't create a user unless you're root. You, you need your current password. I guess I'm just going to have to get a shell, a reverse shell. So, uh, Ubuntu reverse shell. Everyone says use netcat, but what about this? Oh, yeah, no. Not in some zip codes. There's been like some where you can like 
basically redirect the output to a certain file that some people like it didn't work. It was like a very half comprehension in that cap. I don't know if that's the case for this particular machine, but I'm pretty sure that's been like allowed. So I think that it's I think bash a bash reverse shell would work. So yeah. let's copy this. Let me find it. If it's not correct, tell me. Is this correct? That's the one that now. Is this one? You should try the one on the web on the reverse shell teaches. The the the, the monkey thing. It can take monkey. Let me find it. Okay. Sorry, we're we're still fixing that one right there in the in the recap view. Mm, that one here was out of order. Though it technically would have worked, the web encoded one. Maybe you don't know because you don't know what interpreter is sitting on which side. But if you do know what interpreter is sitting on which side, could you have explained it? This? Uh, is my listener still up? Uh, I need to change this to 8080. Netcat will load that, right? Well, I can, if I listen on 8080. Mm -hmm. Get put, get add. Just cause I don't know why I did that. Gosh dang it. I really need to fix that. JJ. So, does anyone have any questions about what I've been doing so far and why I've been doing it? No? Everyone's good? This is a really long password. Hmm? No, I'm, I'm also running the update switch. Isn't it just bash update.sh? Nope. That's a bunch of things. Nick likes to be fancy. Your listener wasn't working. Yeah, you put the wrong source address in here. Yeah, you're right. I put the uh, I put 101 instead of 100. Yeah, change it. So. So like, it's it's noted that it can be really difficult to de uh, debug these payloads because he's not going to get any feedback. Based off this, and we also need to fix it because it's like the only reason why we know it failed is because I'm on the console and just tried to run. It's like that's something you should be very very like, mindful of checking, is to understand why your payloads are failing, um, and you can run these locally as well, which is a useful way to test them. There we go. Now I have a session. 
And it looks like, and I'm going to, you know, um, so it looks like I'm in some random config, uh, or I'm in bin with uh, a ton of configs. Looks like Pyth pips installed, Python 2 is installed, easy install. Let's see where I can go. Um, can I go, or let's see who I am. Who am I? I'm simple config. Um, that's not really helpful because I want to be a user. Uh, CD. CD Dark Army. Well, there is Leon, White Rose, and Angela. And also there's Crow. I'm pretty sure that's the honeypot user. Yeah, Cowie's the honeypot. So let's see what I can do. Uh, and Angela, because Angela is not a good hacker. Is there nothing? Does Angela literally have nothing? Interesting. <laughs> that th that took not long. Should be noted that the bash history files go under readable by your own user. This is a bad config. That's why I said Angela's bad. She doesn't know how to set things up. Therefore, I have a password. So I'm going to uh, SSH tack uh, SSH um, Angela uh, at 192.168. Point zero point. Yeah, you're right. Sad. Well, now I'm on the box uh, as a user instead of this, so I can close out of this because I don't care. How fast did you think I'd find it? Um, <laughs> So let's see what White Rose does. There's no bash history for White Rose. Drats. Dude, Leon the Assassin? Like, mm, I don't know if I want to be messing around with this stuff. Oh, dude, he's got a ton of stuff. Let's see what's in it. Uh, let's see his bash history dot bash. History. Or cat dot bash history. I don't have permission. Uh, I don't have permission to any of these things. Um, so now we have the start enumeration. This is the fun part, as Nick would like to say. Um, so I'm going to uh, just, you know, I have some commands that I like to run or guide per se that I, I like look at uh, you can write your own guide um, I just use this one because you know it's nice and for the safe sake of like time I'm going to put this on my other monitor and run them or like and like write them in the co console so I don't have to keep moving uh, screens so let's put this Which um, is actually done a lot. Yeah, and it's a really, really simple way because they almost always have some sort of web client that they can pull things with. Um, it is not super common that you will be given an SSH user that can FTP files later. Um, this is just a convenient thing because when you're dealing with a netcat reverse session, sometimes they just decide to crash and then you have a sad time because you will lose your progress. Um, and so I didn't want that to happen to mistake. So, um, the, the first thing that I'm going to do is just kind of see what kind of environment I'm in. Uh, looks like I'm in Ubuntu 14.04. Anyways, um, so I'm going to also, you know, 
I'm gonna see if there's any. I I, I don't think that there's any uh, kernel exploits for this, but you know it's a good thing to check. So if I just uh, kernel Ubuntu 14.04 kernel. Fourteen point oh four point one. Don't think there's a bone. There's a kernel exploit for this. Yeah, I don't think there's a kernel exploit for this. Sad days. Oh well. Back to enumeration. So, um, next. Um, I want to see what kind of processes are running, so we can see what's running. That's uh, root. Uh, Leon's running bash. Um, this is what? This is the actual fun part. So let's. Nick, stop laughing. I literally broke in like I only asked for one hint this entire time. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm just laughing because I don't want you to be disappointed. <sighs> like when you're playing hide and seek and someone doesn't find you, you think that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's Nick's an interesting person. Oh. Uh, stuff running as root. I don't know if this is going to be necessarily helpful. I mean, it's helpful to see that there's a lot of stuff running as root. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. What is this? What is this? What is this? Twisted. What is this running? Oh, this isn't running as root. This is running as crow. Hope so for nothing. Basically, I'm just trying to find stuff that are running as root that I can maybe inject into. But I don't see anything. Okay, back to looking for more stuff. Um, let's uh, let's see if there's like any misconfigured uh, SUID stuff. I wonder. So this is just gonna like check everything for or check for uh, UID file or files that have UID on them and I can see if there's anything interesting that m he may have created that may be misconfigured um, so like stuff that I know that I won't be able to get into is like uh, bin past WD or I mean I mean like I won't be able to uh, exploit uh, SUID because those are kind of default things that Linux creates. Um, I don't see, I may be able to, I don't see anything that I can use necessarily to exploit here. So I'm just gonna, I see it. Just above that cluster of www My keyboard is really hot right now. And it's not because I have good a hacking skills. <coughs> so I'll just go ahead and 
that's telepathy function. So Patrick, you have to do your move to bind. Well, you don't have to move, but a common way to bind before any or any well or known force, like below some kind of force, is to group. So if Apache and other web servers will spawn one link user and then force entry to a way they can test it. So that's just something. This is running as root. It's like full code. You already broke it. Yeah, I know. I already got root technically. Well, so does Git. Well, so you're fine. <laughs> well, depending on where you work, it is. Savage. Oh. <laughs> okay. Sorry for headphone users. <laughs> I think there's like three people watching the stream. One of them's me. One of them's Alan. <laughs> Is one of them you? Yeah, we have like three people watching the stream and they're all in this room, <laughs> except for Alan. Uh, I honestly don't see anything there. Jumps out is me. Um, system, no, nah, that's not good. I already did. Yeah, it's down here. Or it's this this list right here. I don't know. I don't think I can exploit any of these things. I think these are all just be default. Yeah, I don't want to do that because like the, those scripts are helpful for whenever you're doing this by yourself. But like, if I'm because I'm doing this with y'all, I would just be sifting through like mounds of data, yeah. and I don't think that they're gonna find anything useful really. Uh, what happens if I sudo? Sudo. Vi. The entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna make a, a different password. And then what what was Angela's password again? I forgot already. If only you had notes. If only I had notes. Why do I always do CD? Copy. Sudo, sudo su. It's not a sudoer. Gosh darn it, the incident's reported. I'm caught. You were caught when you entered the honeypot. <laughs> Basically. Uh, can I sudo by? No, this isn't, that's not going to work. Hmm. days sad days see what I have writable or see what's writable uh, writable scripts that are invoked by root whatsapp These are all 
writable and that have uh, Yeah, no. Let's see. Ooh, log rotate. I remember reading an exploit about that. But then again, you said that it wouldn't be anything I've read about, and you know I read about that. So is it log? Is it log rotate? I'm just gonna keep searching. Log rotate D. I'm gonna. I feel like there's a path here. I'm just searching for a log rotate for Vesk, by the way. Because I remember reading about one. Huh. So it creates a file. I don't know what I can do here, but I feel like this is the right track, so we're going to continue. I'm just reading this uh, <laughs> this uh, basically getting root with upstart sessions. Um, says the owner is very easy to trigger with the log rotate script Etsy daily cron daily. Uh, so basically for each log rotates requested. system uh, on a system with if and we'll create the directory run user UID writable by the user by preparing a suitable file system system will be applied uh, CD slash run user Permission denied. But if I 
time for any pseudo obsession users to apply code that will run on the cron job. So I just have to add this to the I should be able to write Okay, before I try this, am I on the right track? Um, this may work. This is not how I would export while go tape, but this may work. But it is log rotate then. I've like never written a script for log rotate before, so we're going to learn here. Yeah, so what I'm thinking of doing is is using upstart to start a script to run a root bash session. So I'm root with bash. Um, I was told that I can do this in two lines. I don't know if this method can be done in two lines, but I was told that this one isn't two lines. This one is. It's not. It's not. That was the two line one? Yeah. But there's two methods to two methods to privesc. Yep. No, that's not necessarily true. There are two methods to read that file. One of them is not a privesc. I don't know why I did that. I know that doesn't work. <laughs> so uh, just because he decided to give us that hint with social engineering, I'm going to try and see. Social engineering. Social engineering. <laughs> um, not actually, though. <laughs> yeah, I got information without asking for a hint. That's all that matters. Um, uh, view file on Linux without permission. I think what he's getting at is there is some uh, way to cat out that file. Some process that doesn't necessarily have a privilege escalation uh, vulnerability, but a arbitrary is this is What time is it? Three oh five. Aaron's like, so what do we do after I'm done in the first hour? <laughs> hey, I technically got root in the first hour. It was after two o'clock when you got root. Oh really? Yep. Oh dang. I'm a bit rusty. Okay, well I'm really hungry and uh I don't think I'm gonna be able to solve this in the next hour. You want me to run through it? Yeah. I just realized this microphone is in my jacket. Dang, dog. Sorry, everyone on the screen. Me, Alan, and Jake. Uh, so, uh, I think more enumeration needs to be done, and so that's the direction that I would be going. Um, a useful thing to enumerate are what cron jobs are running, because it's a, a good idea to see what's running periodically. Um, you can also check what services are running, but since I n wrote the box, I know that it's going to be in the cron jobs. Um, but there's a handful of ways you should be checking what services are running and who they're running by. 
Uh, and so this one's going to be using syscd init because it's Ubuntu 14.04. Uh, so you would read up on that, understand how that functions, and see what startup processes you have. Uh, similarly here, you need to check your cron jobs. Um, we have three. Uh, simple config, which, OK, also, you should be able to read your cron jobs. Most of the time, users can read cron job files, uh, just as an aside. You may not be able to, but it's fairly standard to let users read them. Uh, and so here we see simple config, which is running a simple config. Uh, we can check and see what this file contains. Uh, and we'll see that it's actually the exploit that we use to get user. And not really useful for us because it's running a simple config. Uh, we can check data backup. And we can see that this is a script running as root, which gives us an idea that we probably need to find something in this. So we can check user local bin backup. Um, and we have a data exfiltration script that is quote unquote backup. Um, make note of this later. Uh, that it, it reads the file for us and posts it to an external URL of some form or fashion, uh, which maybe can be exploited. We can also check the log rotate script. Um, fun fact, it shows the directory and then runs it. Um, this is a hacky fix to get around the fact that log rotate's been patched recently. Um, but um, if you know more about log rotate, log rotate does allow arbitrary code execution. Uh, and so if you man log rotate.conf, uh, you can read the different configuration files you can, uh, options you can give. Uh, and if you see here, log rotate does have a script option. And so if you can write a log rotate script, I mean, if you can write a config for log rotate, you will have code execution guaranteed, um, as long as it executes. Uh, on the right track. Modern versions of log rotate, um, they check for the permissions of the file. It has to be only readable, writable by root and has to be owned by root, um, which hampers the exploitation process. Um, but because it's choning, because bad config, uh, we can just simply write a log rotate script to get a reverse handler. Um, let me open up a new tab for that. Actually, I'll just. SDC for double handler. Uh, okay. Um, I can just copy and paste this. Whoa. You can close that out. How close? Oh. Close. There we go. So we can copy and paste this script. Copy. Like reading man files is super useful if you don't know what you're doing with, especially like if you've never written written, written a log rotate config. Uh, you probably have never touched it, of course. Uh, and so we can do vi uh, loot.txt. And we could do this with any file because we're root running as log rotate, so we can edit anything we want. Um, but so let's go ahead and make this loot. Alt V, Control Shift V. Control Shift v. You right. You need to be in uh, your environment. You're right. Um, and then so, well, there's just some like random facts, and this requires knowing a decent amount of log rotate. So if you see that log rotate is writable, you should really start doing a lot of reading and try to understand how log rotate works. Um, but in this case, um, it backups a script. If it backs up your log files, if you think you need to. Uh, and so this is generally due to file size or time frame. And it allows you to store more logs without having a giant file or a lot of storage space. Uh, and so we can set monthly, we don't care. Uh, rotate to, we don't care. Old dear, we don't care. Uh, missing OK, we don't care. Um, but knowing log rotate, there's a handful of directives. Uh, we want to enforce that this script is going to run basically no matter what. Uh, and because I also know the file, the size of the file we're going to try to rotate, um, we can make this max size is equal to two bytes. So if it, the file is larger than two bytes, it's going to, uh, it's going to rotate it. Uh, and let's move this to temp, temp log rotate, and post rotate. We can actually use the payload we already dropped handily, um, which is nice. And so we can just run temp simple config. Um, I don't remember the name of the file. Update.sh. Update yeah, you're right. And then BC. Control BC? Yeah. And then we can set up our netcat listener. You're listening on 4040, right? I mean 8080, right? Yeah. Listen port. 
So that will start listening for us. And so whenever we actually configure this, it'll run our payload. So, whoa. Yeah, there we go. And so we have what is our malicious log rotate file? Oh, no, it, I don't, it doesn't really matter, but yeah. And so we can write that. And then we can sudo, not sudo, my bad. Vi temp log rotate, fill it with gibberish long enough to be rotated, uh, and then wait. Uh, the cron job runs every five minutes. And so when the cron job runs, we will get to see it call back. Uh, fortunately, log files in the system are also, oh, dang, we can't read logs. Unfortunate. Um, if you had the ability to read logs, you could be more easily diagnosing your script. In this case, it's just going to be trial and error until you get it to work, unfortunately. But um, we can wait. When we have success on run, we should be getting, you can watch. yeah, 644. Four. Um, so because I also know the permissions, um, you have to change that as well. Um, so the script should change the permissions of the file and then execute it. Uh, and that will happen in like 50 seconds. 50 seconds. So we can, while we wait, we can move on to the, actually, let me make sure the file's right. So it should be running temp log rotate simple config update.sh. Yep. So that will be run as root, and then we will have full access as soon as it executes, assuming it does execute. Um, I may have some bad config in my old deer. So I'll get rid of that. 20 seconds. And then we wait 10 more seconds, and it should execute. If not, you can just continue trial and error. Um, I can't guarantee that what I typed will work on the fly. Um, it's relatively difficult to penetration test in front of everyone, just because it's really easy to make mistakes. Which will be two. And my handle did not file fire. So we can check the different things that happened. If I can control B0. We can check and see if it was choned. Uh, and it wasn't choned. So that could be a problem with the log rotate side. Um, I wrote that fairly ad hoc. Uh, so the script may have failed, um, actually, unfortunately. Um, but there is another way to exploit. So we go to Etsy, and we check what's writable. Uh, you can either do that with find or with a quick ls. So it's going to be faster with find. Um, but with ls, you can just check what permissions you can write to. Um, given the right find command, you would find that Etsy hosts is writable, uh, which means you can do a DNS poisoning attack. Uh, and since the entire system relies on DNS, you have to be able to uh, anything that's not HTTPS verifying certs or anything that's TOS verifying certs, uh, you now have control over. Uh, and so in this case, you could edit the Etsy hosts file to point the domain that we found back in user local bin. We can, we can take this file, the backup script, and change where it points. And so you could just exfiltrate it that way. Uh, you just make backup.darkarmy point to a server you control. Uh, it could be the server. Uh, and then view the data it posted. And you also have the data. And that is that. Um, I'm not going to write it because it takes a decent amount of time. But that's it. That's how you would do data exfil after, after popping. Yep, that's privilege escalation for you. Um, the majority of things I would recommend when you get started is check what you can write, check what you can read. Um, those two are really good ways to identify where you should be going. Um, check your cron jobs, check your services, see what's there, see what's custom. That's like ideal. Likely, you're not going to find anything that's built in that's broken. Um, that unless, uh, uh, that's like a, more of a patching level problem. But when you're dealing with custom things, people can figure things wrong all the time just because it's really easy to do so. And so like knowing about log rotate, log rotate doesn't always provide you everything you need. And so if you're trying to customize things, really easy to screw things up because it runs as root. Um, other than that, um, sudo attack L is great because you can see what you can do. Cap sh is also good. Um, maybe not L, cap sh. Print. Cap SH is also great. Um, if for some reason he wasn't using SSH, this will print the capabilities that you have. And so you may not be sudo. You may, you may not have sudo. You may not have root. Uh, but if you have certain capabilities, you can continue to exploit down that path. Um, that's not going to happen with SSH. But with something like the simple config backdoor, um, you may be able to do it that way. And that is Linux exploitation in a nutshell.
Um, really playing around in Etsy is also a good way. Um, seeing what you can read in Etsy, like if you check Etsy now, um, Etsy shadows were passwords restored. Um, we can see that we can't read it, which is good. Um, but if you're kind of do further enumeration, you can check Etsy passwords, see what, what users are on the box. Um, nothing useful because we already know what we're doing. Um, but that's just getting more information. Um, I think it's worthwhile to get as much information as possible before you pick a path, um, because you may be taking the hard path. Um, but that's um, it just breadth versus depth. It's a different approach. Uh, and that's it. Do you all have any questions? Yep. I just didn't see it. Yeah, if you can write to Etsy hosts, it's a dead giveaway that you can probably do DNS poisoning on some level. It may not end up being useful, um, but Etsy hosts is the first level of resolution for DNS before it hits your a DNS resolver, uh, so like Google or whatever DHCP provides. And so if you can do DNS poisoning there, anything that isn't cert validated, you now control, um, which is actually a super big deal. Because as long as they're not checking certificates, um, which can even be bypassed to an extent, um, if you have more level control on the file system, um, you can really start mucking with their remote connections, which is pretty handy. Um, SSH is going to be hard because it does store public keys. TLS is, or HTTPS is going to be hard because you have to have a valid CA. Um, but past that, pretty easy. Any other questions? Generally. Um, that's like if, if it's HTTPS, as long as they cannot force a, config, a confirm of the certificate, then yes, you don't have to worry about it. Because like let's say, uh, so my domain name is coolnix.com. Um, no valid CA should issue a certificate for that domain name to anyone but me. And so on this system, because we don't have access to the certificate authorities, um, I cannot force them to validate my cert. But if they're not validating identity, um, and they just say, yes, we're using HTTPS, but we don't care who we're talking to, uh, then you're vulnerable. I mean, it's, it really just depends on the configuration. It's just not a guaranteed like HTTP is. Any other questions? Yeah, and that's it. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'll probably make a video write up of me building it. Um, that way, you can follow along there if you're interested in how I made it. Um, and I'll probably make tweaks to things that didn't work. Um, log rotate in particular. Uh, it was working at one point, but then I made more tweaks this morning that broke it. Um, but yeah, I'll fix that up and then I'll thank you. I'll write up on what I did yeah. and uh, like how to actually exploit log rotate after you fix it. Yeah. And that's that. Thank you all for coming. Um, if you have any questions, you can always ask. Um, check us out on Slack. Um, the video will go up on YouTube if you're wanting to watch another three and a half hours of this, um, probably tonight. <laughs>